Hey there, it's Annabelle. I promised that I would talk about my weavings a bit and also about my other projects, but I thought I would start on my weaving samples because I have them all here in a bag. Just to give a brief on those who don't understand what I study or don't know my major, I'm doing textile design and the curriculum could be weaving, screen printing, digital embroidery. Within that, there are different levels. So you have one, two, and then eventually the industrial level, which I have yet to take. In our final year is when we do our own degree project, kind of pursue whatever we want and kick off our art practice. So everything here is from the class where we start weaving on Dobby looms and it's no longer completely hand operated like a jack loom so we draft on the computer depending what kind of draft but the gist of it is you're looking at a graph paper the filled in square means the intersection of warp and weft it could be different depending on what structure it is finally designing on the computer makes it a lot faster you know imagine filling in a square with your pencil versus just clicking once in general you're still designing the entire structure yourself and the only reason we use a computer is because we have so many harnesses that when we press the one pedal, the computer connects our draft, translates it to the loom, and tells it which harness to pick up. One of the first weeks was this. Last year we started out with every student having their own loom, but for this class there aren't enough for all 12 of us, so we have to share. Every loom is fixed up with different colored yarn, so that way we can really vary our samples. You can see these two, it was made on one because the warp is the same turquoise color. I use cut up fabric here to make clownfish. I thought it would be fun and also this fabric was left over from my final last year. I really like to reuse and save all of my scraps. Here I was inspired by the peacock colors mainly because I came across some yarn at Michael's that just made sense for me to mimic that feather like chevron. So sometimes the back is nicer than the front or they're equally interesting but this one is not too different. The second week I didn't love this because I was working on the other looms and the tie up was completely different which means that I can in no way do this structure when the tie up of all the yarns are in the block tie up. I just wanted to see what it would be like to mix some matte yarn with metallic rayon but not too special. I don't like this color at all. Um, the, the loom I signed up for was gray and I hate this color combination but I tried to make the best of it. I wove in some of that holographic cardstock and then the other ones we glance over but it's not super remarkable so I don't have much to say about them. This one's also from week one and it's the cut fabric so you can see the edge of the satin is a little bit frayed and gives it that fuzzy look and this was inspired by goldfish. By also using different materials that are the same color it looks like a little gradient and I wanted to get that sort of fish gill texture. It just overall looks like stripes. You can kind of make out that in this sample it's prairie, but I didn't want it to have like a very, very familiar typical cat shape. So I know how she's like very slender and kind of weird looking and that's why this shape on my crew neck was inspired by her. It was, it was just like a funny little weaving, but you can see why it's a little bit more rectangular because I had to cut it short since it's really easy to make mistakes. There's a really big margin for error. You just miss one thread and it's really obvious and it's more obvious in the back when certain ones carry through and it's not supposed to right here. Right here, there's an error. Um, like right here, but it's just really difficult sometimes because especially when you're sharing machines, the tensions are off so when you hand operate it, even though the computer helps you lift the harness, you're still actually physically weaving it. It still lifts and you're still putting yarn through as you saw in my vlogs. Something that was really fun is when we got to double-sided weave structures and this one is on the block draw which is why it has to be geometric. I can't really make curves or anything organic. I found this stretchy spandex fabric with metallic and it shimmers and on the back it's the negative basically so you can tell what I was going for. It's like city at night and then city in the day kind of except these are clouds and then now I don't know what that is. Kind of a boring pattern of just strawberries. I try to make them more interesting by having them confronted instead of all facing one direction and staggered but it still looks pretty basic. Kind of more interesting on the back because you see the negative and then a bigger stripe pattern. I wove with 
super metallic yarn and then matte black just to see what the double weave was like. This one was from a photo of a forest fire. You can see I really lost the overall pattern and it recedes into just a basic stripe. Like the texture is interesting just because I chose to weave with a fuzzy material, but you really don't get much more and that's not always bad, but I, I think because it was my intention to do more, that's what happened. So here I found really thick, bright cord and then we had some chenille it was like, really bright green and fuzzy so of course the complimentary it reminds me of some sort of like trident gum it is a double weave you really can't tell though because it looks the same just because of the pattern but this is pink but then on this side it's green this one's also double i just really liked experimenting with materials i think this one was tulle you know what you see in formal dresses or tutus yeah, I cut that up. It had some paint on it and then glitter. So then when I wove it with this pattern, I wanted to get the essence of coral because I saw a photo of very pink coral and then the dark negative space. Here are a couple that I don't really like at all just because I was getting the hang of it. This one is okay. This took way too long because I was using tapestry method, meaning I would hand place every single one of these color changes and then cut them behind here. Having fun with shiny yarn and it didn't really amount to anything, but sometimes it doesn't and sometimes it does. This one as well. I was having a bad frustrating night, not, not really going through with anything that I planned. Even if you work out a draft and it's perfectly structurally sound, when you finally weave it out, either the color doesn't work, the yarn or the material doesn't work, or it looks not like you expected, or it's too smushed because the thickness of the yarn also affects how your image will come out. You can tell there are some mistakes though. I'm not gonna actively point them out, but if you see them, you see them. And this one of Pickles. This one was double weave. Pickles is like one of Tyler's favorite things. So he's super excited about the idea of me weaving something about pickles. So I kind of came out with this really pop arty random pickles weave. I'm not sure which side I like better. This one's kind of typical, this one's kind of more interesting. And when my professor saw it, she's just like, I can't stand pickles. Then we moved on to another weave structure. Um, matte lace, so it's a different kind of tie up and when I first practiced with them again Like you really have to get the hang of it just because you know how to operate something successfully doesn't mean that anything that you make might be effective these tiny little things that just Gray out from afar if you look up close you're really intricate This one was inspired by art deco and this one was inspired by windows when I went to Palace de Cristal in Spain and that is not a good pronunciation. I cannot pronounce Spanish words, but I redid this one in the end. So some of the tie-ups are mirrored, which is why you see. So this one is a mirrored one, but it is a second rendition of this one because it completely gets lost in how complicated and tiny it is. As I start to turn it, it turns blue because you see the tiny warp coming through. I went to Europe with my mom late summer last year. These were inspired by the architecture that we went to see by Gaudi, directly inspired by the sculptures on the rooftop. I think this was meant to go this way, so you can tell I was trying to get that shadow to light with the curves. We are already near the end, and for our final collection, we had to pick one idea during the festivals or whatnot. We always watched the Chinese opera and things like that, and there was an act called Bianlian, which is changing faces, and the concept of the whole act is distraction, so that's why the helmets are very ornate, and you have really big winged sleeves with fans. I love how vibrant they are, and they inspired my color palettes, as well as the motifs that I came up with. So I really like this one because of how playful it is. I use pipe cleaner. You can see the back here. It's not as interesting because the yarn I used here is metallic and then this one is not. With this one, I was trying to get the idea of the mask um, being concealed. And if you look closely, there are eyes here. And originally I wanted to go back with some foil, you know, like gold leaf, that sort of thing. I didn't get the time to, but I still can. I'm still free to do whatever I want to this. This one is similar in the same concept of kind of now you see me, now you don't. Over here, you can see the eyes, the nose, and then I meant to have them basically as overlapping, but then it kind of merges into one 
one mask. The back looks pretty interesting as well. So it's just really fun. This one was the last thing I did and it's so silly. I wanted to use this photo with all of the masks hanging up. It turns out to look like freaking Sesame Street. And I would have gone longer if I had the time, but this one already took me four hours, maybe longer, I can't really remember. So I was using tapestry, putting in materials like pipe cleaner again, and using different sorts of yarns. This one was focusing on details on the robe, I believe, and it was done on the royal blue warp, which shows up over here. And I did tapestry with loose red dyed fiber. If I just put it all the way across, then it would pop through in between, but I wanted to define the circles. Kind of looks like when I was little, I would design birthday cakes for fun. I would draw them and I would always make this sort of crazy thing like swirly frostings and then fruits. It looks like that, but the color doesn't go. And the last thing I haven't shown, this was in a vlog where I was talking about drying this. It just made my other metallic yarns loose and want to fall out, so it looks a bit sloppy. But I'm glad that I tried to do some finishing techniques. No, this is actually the last one. It looks super short and I'll explain why, but it's my favorite one. You see like a dragon mask over here and then you have this weird Mickey Mouse looking thing. I was meant to cut this, cut this part to reveal like a U shape, but I, I enjoy the size variation. So the back looks like this. So I used a lot more tapestry techniques like this triangle. If I didn't do that, then it would continue all the way and another thing that my professor pointed out is that the top is a little bit longer just a tiny bit longer when i was operating the loom i was using the beater which is the comb that presses all of the yarns back with every row i was beating it harder and then in the last row i was a little looser because i was realizing how squish it was becoming and that was a mistake because if you want continuity you don't just change it halfway through you either have them all loose or all all squished but when it came off the tension it also kind of just shrunk up so it's a little bit shorter than i want it to be i think i have left out random little things and then there's always these you know practice sample rows where you just throw together different materials to see how it works with the color this is just what i showed you it took me maybe two hours to figure out how to weave or get it exactly how i like i think a lot of people will wonder like how, how does this apply to the industry so basically not only is it in apparel you know woven fabrics are in apparel or in furniture interior or exterior textiles but in science for smart textiles like inventing fire retardant blankets spacesuits seat belts they're woven if you're asking me why i wanted to do textile design i was choosing between apparel and textiles and i enjoy texture and surface pattern and color a lot more than the 3d composition and construction of a garment so that's why i didn't do apparel but how that affects me as a designer for example if i were to graduate and want to start a clothing line then i think i put a lot more emphasis on exactly what materials i am knitting with like i'm not going to use acrylic um, a lot of plastics that's that and i hope that it was interesting informational if you have any more questions i'll try my best to answer them and now i'm gonna have to rush off i wanted to make it to the post office but it's closed again and it's been storming cars rushing by outside i'm sure that you heard Ray is here with me right now she was sleeping on all of my weaving samples because she just loves to get on top of things that you normally wouldn't sleep on i would buy her a bed but she would choose that instead oh that rhymed so we're gonna sign off together and if you were interested in this crew neck i believe it's still on sale until the end of the month because i had that flash sale last year and a lot of people ended up missing out and then emailing to get on the wait list so i did activate it again so the campaign's still going on but i haven't been actively advertising or trying to promote it just because my favorite thing is just to talk to you in the comments and to have this community you don't have to feel bad if you can't afford it or you just don't like it it's not i don't take it the wrong way at all if you just don't want it i made it for for those who do want it it's prairie and just me i guess this one is me that's her glaring at me sending you my love the sunset behind me while I was talking. Thank you for being here. Bye!
As you can see, Prairie loves me a lot more than she did before. I've been reading a lot and she would just cuddle up on my chest for the whole two hours. She seems kind of indifferent about being here. I'm gonna let you go.